out from the St. John this morning. Just a few announcements to highlight from the newsletter. They're putting together some count teams again to do the Sunday, to count the Sunday morning offerings. And so if you are able to come Sundays after church, or if another time would be more convenient, but you'd like to help see Diane Warwinkle, she's sitting up here in yellow. And I mean, Diane's been doing a wonderful job, but it is a good thing to have a team to do it for the checks and balances and things. So thank you, Diane, for carrying on, and thanks for organizing these teams. And then this afternoon, after you've had your delicious, delightful meal at lunchtime, come back for ice cream and piano music. We're all set up for a great afternoon of fellowship and yummy treats. And there's lots of good bakery in the church office that it looks like you could purchase to take home with you. And if you've never been to the Cleveland Oktoberfest, think about going over there. It's at the Metro Parks off of Tiedemann, and it's run by Gethsemane Lakewood, and they have polka music and everything, and they're looking for volunteers. So if you'd like to volunteer to help in any way, there's a website to contact them. And finally, in the hallway, there's a bunch of books on shelves next to the men's bathroom. Those are free for you to take. We have had more books brought in, and so we would like to replace the books that are on the shelf with some of the books that have been donated for our people's enjoyment and spiritual growth. That's all the announcements I have. And so Pastor Jill, we're happy to have you back today. And we have Alan up on the organ bench, and so we are ready to begin our worship. Thank you, Karen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship in the name of our Lord. We're glad that you can uh, join us. So if you're here in the sanctuary or worshiping with us online, today is your love Sunday in the season of Pentecost. In that first lesson, we're going to hear about the prophet Elijah and kind of he was discouraged, but God fed him and strengthened him for the journey before him. We also face discouragement and trials in our lives, but we come and we can find out through his word but that uh, good food of the one who is the bread of life, Jesus. And that's the focus of our worship today. Our word of worship is found on the worship sheets that are in your view. And we begin on the first page with our opening hymn for a thousand tongues to sing. Let's worship our God.
tell Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he arose and ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Ephesians. This I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do, in the fertility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardness of heart. They have become calloused and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with everyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Whoever 
believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
And when they do, how do you feel? Do you ever become discouraged? Do you ever feel like throwing up your hands and saying, I can't take any more, I've had enough? If so, you're not alone. That, how the prophet Elijah felt, we hear his story in that first lesson today from 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah's story begins with a dramatic miracle. At Elijah's time, the people of Israel had forsaken worshiping the true God of Israel, the Lord God, for the false god Baal, the god of the Canaanites in whose land they lived. What Elijah sought to demonstrate that the Lord God of Israel was the one and only true God, and so he challenged the prophets of Baal to a contest. Each side was to build a stone altar. On the altar they were to place wood. On the wood they were to place an animal sacrifice. But no match was to be used. Each side was to pray to their God to send fire down from heaven to ignite the wood and burn up the animal sacrifice. Whoever's God listened and sent down fire from heaven would be declared the winner, the only true God. So the prophets of Baal went first. They built their altar. They put the wood on. They laid the animal sacrifice on top. Then they prayed to Baal, but no fire. They danced around the altar until they could dance no more, but no fire. They even cut themselves to get Baal's attention, but no fire. Then it was Elijah's turn. He built his altar, put on the wood and then the animal sacrifice. To make it even more difficult, he doused everything with water. Then he prayed to the Lord God. And instantly fire fell from heaven. It not only ignited the wood and burned up the animal sacrifice, but it also burned up the water and the stones as well. Well, that was the end of the road for the prophets of Baal. When the people of Israel saw this, they together cried out in chapter 18, The Lord is God. The Lord alone is God. Then they rounded up the 450 prophets of Baal and put them to the sword. What a mighty triumph for the prophet Elijah. Or so Elijah thought. But what Elijah had not anticipated was the fury of one very powerful supporter of the God man. Her name was Jezebel. And she was the queen of Israel. When Jezebel heard what Elijah had done, she sent him this message in chapter 19, verse 2. May the gods strike me dead. Anything to you that you did to the prophets of Baal. Where Elijah got the message. Afraid of the fury of Queen Jezebel, he took off running. Listen to what the Bible says in verse 4. Elijah went a full day's journey into the desert. He came to a tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. Well, today, 
Let's discover the good news that God has for us when we, like the prophet Elijah, feel that we have had enough. I provided again a brief outline in your worship sheet. It's on page four in the middle if you want to follow along. But the first thing I want us to catch here is this. Number one, we are tempted to give up. We are tempted to give up. No, things are not supposed to work out their way, are they? Elijah had stood up for the Lord. He had been faithful to the Lord. He had won a tremendous victory for the Lord. Elijah was on a mountain top, but then suddenly he found himself running for his life. His spirit sank into a pit. Yes, Elijah was a man of God, but that did not stop him or prevent him from becoming discouraged. I have had enough, O oh Lord, he cried, take my life. You know, sometimes we are like Elijah, right? Sometimes we also become discouraged. For example, life is good. After years of hard work, we are finally enjoying the fruits of our labor. Then we make a routine visit to the doctor, and he jolts us with the news, you have cancer. Suddenly the bottom drops out of our life, and if that disease is not bad enough, then often there's a treatment. Chemotherapy is worse than the cancer, patients say. I'm not going back for another treatment, I have had enough. But you know, cancer, and that treatment that often goes along with it, are not the only things that can make us cry out enough. There are many other things in life that take a toll on our spirit, right? For example, marriage strife, family conflicts, too much demand at work or the loss of a job, financial difficulties, the death of a loved one, these and many other things have a way of sapping our strength and dashing our hopes so that we get discouraged and cry out, I've had enough. Yet sometimes, like Elijah, we are tempted to Give up. And that brings us to the second thing on your outline, number two. God does not give up on us. God does not give up on us. Yes, in his discouragement, Elijah sat down under a tree and fell asleep. Listen to what happened next, beginning in verse 5. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals in a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, the mountain of God. Yes, like the prophet Elijah, we can be tempted to give up. But the Lord does not give up on us. That's a lesson that Elijah had to learn, and that's a lesson we need to learn as well. You know, in his humanity, Jesus learned that lesson. I'm sure there were many moments in Jesus' ministry that tempted to discourage him. 
For example, when his own disciples betrayed and denied him, when witnesses lied about him at his trial, when the religious leaders, the leaders of his own faith and nation, condemned him to death. Yes, in the Garden of Gethsemane that night, Jesus prayed in Matthew 26, Father, take this cup away from me. But Jesus did not give up on the Lord. He also prayed, yet not as I will, but as you will. No, Jesus did not give up. And Jesus did not give in either. He did not give in to that pride that maintains because of our good efforts, our good works, that we in some way should be exempt from trials and troubles in our lives. You know, Jesus could have done that because he did nothing to deserve the things that he suffered. But Jesus refused to play that game. Friends, when things go wrong in your life, do you ever complain to God? Do you ever remind God of your good efforts? For example, how you've been working hard, how you've been supporting your family, how you've been a good neighbor, a good citizen, how you've even been serving the Lord here in His church. Do you ever complain, God, after all I've done for you, how could you let this happen to me? Yes, sometimes when we're discouraged by life's troubles, we complain to God, don't we? But what we forget is that we don't deserve anything from God, or at least anything good. For like the people of Israel in Elijah's time, we also can worship false gods. Not that God named Baal, but too often the gods named money, or pleasure, or possessions. Too often we fail to keep God's first and foremost commandment, have no other gods before me. And although it's a hard message to hear, the truth is what we deserve from God is His punishment for our sinfulness. And yet, God does not give up on us. Each day, God gives us our daily bread, all that we need to support our body and life. But He does more than that. God gives us life full and forever. As God fed Elijah to strengthen him for the journey ahead, so God feeds us. He sends down that bread from heaven, his one and only Son, Jesus, the very bread of life. And that brings us to the third and final thing I want us to catch. Number three on the outline, God's grace in Jesus is enough. Is enough. Jesus said in the Gospel lesson today, John chapter 6, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Yes, Jesus, the very Son of God, left behind His heavenly throne and came here to be born in our human flesh, even though we don't deserve it. Jesus kept all of God's commandments perfectly for us. All those commandments that God expects us to keep, even though we don't deserve it. Jesus suffered for us, God's punishment in our place, even to death on a cross, even though we don't deserve it. And Jesus rose to life again on that third day from the grave to win that hope of eternal life, even though we don't deserve it. You know, chemotherapy 
may or may not be enough to cure us of cancer. But friends, God's grace in our Savior Jesus is always enough to strengthen us for our life, the journey before us. God sent an angel to feed Elijah. And in the strength of that food, he journeyed on for 40 days and nights to the mountain of God. And so God sent us Jesus, that very living bread, that bread from heaven, that bread of life, to feed us with his grace. What grace? Well, friends, the grace of a father who loves us and embraces us in his family as his dear children. The grace of forgiveness for our sin, which removes the guilt of our wrongdoing and cancels any punishment that we might deserve and receive from God. The grace of the Holy Spirit's presence in our life, who continues to strengthen us through the ministry of word and sacrament, so that we might say, along with the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ, who gives me strength. And the grace of a God who has a wonderful plan for our life and is at work for good in all things, including our trials and troubles. And finally, the grace of hope. Hope for a life that is eternal forever through the resurrection that Jesus won for us on that Easter morning. You know, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Holy Spirit gifted us with faith in Jesus this bread of life, and brought us into God's family as his children. And now, day after day, through his word, and other times through his holy supper that we share, the Holy Spirit lifts our spirits with the good news of God's love and presence and forgiveness, and strengthens our faith to journey on in life day after day after day toward that Mountain of God, our heavenly home. Yes, God's grace in Jesus is always enough. You know, friends, one fact of life in this sinful world is that trials and troubles will indeed come. They come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes they come one after another, and when they do, we are tempted to become discouraged. We're tempted to give up. We're tempted to cry out like Elijah, Enough, Lord! But, the good news today, friends, from God is there's reason to be in courage. For we have a God who loves us. We have a God who promises to be with us each and every day. We have a God who provides all we need to support our body and life. But even more than that, he sent us his son Jesus who said, I am the bread of life. He who believes in me has everlasting life. And friends, that grace, God's grace for us in Jesus is always enough for life. Full and forever. Which prayer is Lord Jesus, you know that life in the sin fallen world is indeed often hard. We get discouraged. We are often tempted to cry enough and give up. Lord Jesus, encourage us again today through your word, feed us with your grace, your love, and forgiveness. A living bread strengthens the journey on all of us toward that heavenly mountain of God. In your name we pray. Amen. Now may the peace of our God that surpasses our human understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. If you would take in hand your worship sheet, turn to the bottom of page 4, we find there the Nicene Creed. We use the Nicene Creed as our common affirmation. We use the Nicene Creed as our common affirmation of Christian faith today. Let's stand and speak together of our common faith.
service in our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we're going to bring our gifts, our offering to the Lord's altar as we do. I thank you for your stewardship, faithful, serving the Lord and providing for his work, sharing that good news and the one who is the bread of life for the world. And as we bring our
actual television. Has she been? This gentleman would like to see the Thank you, Alan. Good morning. How are you? Well, I said you wanted to have a phone with you. 